guys and welcome back to Beauty in the Bookcase where we take a book and we make a look. So today's video was supposed to be part three to my Umbrella Academy series. However, after reading this book and seeing some of the issues that came up while reading reviews, I just knew I had to make this video first. So instead of talking about Hotel Oblivion, which is the last part of the Umbrella Academy series, today we're actually going to talk about Angie Cruz's Dominicana, a story based on the author's mother's journey as an immigrant from the Dominican Republic to the United States and an overall important piece of literature to discuss. So the story centers around a girl called Anna. She is 15 years old and she is made to marry a 30-year-old man named Juan Ruiz. So the marriage was decided by her mother who saw the marriage as an opportunity for the family to come into a bit of money and also to hopefully get out of the Dominican Republic and start a new life in New York. Now, although Anna wasn't the oldest sister, after her sister actually ended up pregnant from a local guard, essentially their mother put all of the family's future into Anna's hands. No pressure. So after their marriage, Juan ends up taking Anna out of the Dominican Republic and moves her into his apartment in New York. Now, without really family skills or knowledge of English, Anna had no choice but to become a prisoner in her own home. It obviously didn't help that Juan didn't even make her a copy of the apartment's key, so if she left, she had no way to go back in unless she was with him or his brother Cesar. Soon enough, unfortunately, Anna finds herself becoming her husband's punching bag and plaything and there's really nothing that she can do to stop him. Not even when she becomes pregnant with his child does he lay off of the abuse. So conflicted between her desire to go home and her need to fulfill her mother's plan, Dominicana is a story about the trauma a young girl must endure to secure her family's future. Warning, today's video talks about sexual assault physical violence, and trauma. Viewer's discretion is advised. So as always, I will start off talking about my cons and then move into what I did enjoy. So there was not much that I didn't enjoy from this book. In a nitpicky sense, I wasn't crazy about the fact that the dialogue wasn't really marked by quotation marks. Um, I was seeing in some reviews that this might be like a new trend. I I mean, it didn't make it difficult to read or anything. It was obvious to know when somebody was speaking, but it was just, it was odd. It was an odd choice for me, but it didn't really take me out of the story. The only other real issues I kind of faced with this story were mostly regarding the subplot in which Anna develops a bit of like a romantic relationship with her uh, brother-in-law, Cesar, who is also way older than her, so it's still, still inappropriate and illegal, but it just, it didn't feel like it added anything. Cesar was kind of brought up like this uh, Prince Charming who was going to end up saving Ana from, from Juan's very, very violent home, but instead he kind of just ends up fading away into the background and disappearing. He moves to to Boston and we don't really hear much from him again. So, I mean, I, I enjoyed his character. I just felt that the part of the story in which he and Anna end up like having a, an affair just didn't seem to fit into the narrative, I guess. Um, the only other thing I really didn't, it's not that I didn't like it, like it wasn't that I did not like the ending at all. I just wanted more from it. As I as I read it, I felt like the story wasn't really over, like it hadn't reached a logical stopping point. Cuz I mean, it does sort of end up on a on a happier note, but I don't think it fully resolved. I I don't think it gave the reader the full like peace of mind and enjoyment of knowing that you know, things were headed in a better direction, I guess. Now let's go into the pros, which I put into quotation marks because the subject matter of this book is quite dark. So, you know, calling it 
a pro sounds a little, I don't know, weird and sensitive, I guess. Um, but the things that I think this book did well, essentially, is what I'm trying to get at. Um, and within that, I'm going to be discussing the issues that I saw people bring up on some of the reviews and why I think um, Angie Cruz decided to to do the things she did in her book. So one of the major topics of this story is domestic violence. Anna is beat by her husband and also just emotionally manipulated and also there is a lot of sexual violence. In general from the reviews there seem to be a lot of people who struggled with seeing such a young girl going through something so violent and so terrible. I mean there were people in general who were just like there's enough bad stuff going on in the world so I couldn't read it because I don't want to sit here and read about a young girl being sexually abused. Of course reading about stuff like that makes people uncomfortable but it's also supposed to you know and by going like well don't like don't don't talk about it I don't want to read a book about that. You're silencing victims indirectly but you are. Um, you're you're trying to pretend that this doesn't happen and I know a lot of people like to read books as a means to sort of escape um, you know everyday struggles and the realities of the world and that's totally fine if that's what you are interested in but I think it's there's it's a bit harmful to almost want to shut down these types of topics because if you don't talk about them, then that's exactly how we end up where we are. And domestic violence is, I mean, it's prevalent all over the world, but it's definitely a huge issue in Latin America. And I think it needed to be dealt with in order to, to explain how this has somehow been normalized and is not okay. I mean, I did see comments that were like, well, by making this, you know, like a violent man, the author is like reinforcing the stereotype that like Hispanic men are violent or aggressive or mistreat their women and stuff. But at the end of the day, it's not all of them, of course not. But there is a lot of domestic violence that goes on in Latin America. There is a massive issue with men murdering women in general, but also, you know, their wives. And I think the reason why we have such a violent character as Juan is not to be like, oh, let's reinforce stereotypes that um, Hispanic men are aggressive, but instead to be like, hey, this is a direct result of toxic masculinity and machismo and all these, you know, very serious issues that exist in Latin America because women are still expected to follow a more traditional role of womanhood and that causes conflict in the home and causes a lot of harm and a lot of death. You know, there were certain reviews that were unhappy with the subject matter of this book because in their eyes it was glorifying domestic violence and abuse, which I can kind of understand why they would have made that assumption since, you know, the main character does endure so much violence. But at no point is she complicit in it. At no, at no point do we have a vulnerable character who goes like, well, I deserve this. Um, and even if she did, you know, she's a 15 year old girl. She is all by herself. So this is the person who's supposed to be protecting her. It's not like at 15, you know, we're connoisseurs of the world, but even if we were, you know, I don't think this book glorifies violence at all. Instead, I think it's meant to shed a light on what a lot of women, especially women who are immigrants, who, you know, they leave their countries with their husbands and now they don't have anybody but their husbands. So they're kind of expected to just deal with it. And they're expected to just take it because they have nowhere else to go. Honestly, regarding the claim of this book glorifying domestic violence, I think people to an extent were expecting her to just 
up and leave, which she tried to do. But that's just not realistic, not only for, you know, immigrant women, but for all women who find themselves in abusive relationships, whether that's physically abusive or emotionally, it's it's very easy to get trapped into a relationship with an abuser and it's incredibly difficult to get out of it and to walk away and and be safe. But I think, you know, Anna did Anna recognized it. She was never ever like oh, this is normal, this is his way of showing me that he loves me, or anything like that. She always, always, always was like, this is not okay, and I need to get out of here because this man is going to kill me. So I definitely don't understand the whole idea of, oh, this is glorifying it. I don't think it glorified it at all. I think it was a very realistic depiction of what a lot of women, and men as well, have to, have to go through as victims of domestic abuse and as victims of sexual violence. They can't just leave. It's been proven that abusers just tend to isolate their their victims and they will make them financially dependent on them so that they have no way out. And that's absolutely Anna's case. Her leaving would be either going back home, which without money she couldn't do anyway, or she'd be homeless on the streets of New York. As for the idea that maybe the, the abuse was glorified by the mother, I don't think that Anna's mom glorified domestic abu abuse either. She was unaware. Um, she didn't marry her daughter off knowing that that was the life she was going to be she was going to be going to. And she does get silenced a lot. Anna does, you know, people will just be like, oh, well, you're ever exaggerating or that's just him or whatever or just be like well he's a good man without letting her explain what he wasn't but the moment Anna's mom realizes that Juan is abusive she is done with that relationship she doesn't want her daughter in that life so did she make a mistake of course but I don't think it's fair to say that this is a story that glorifies domestic abuse because it does not and I think you'd have to read it again or really Put yourself in the perspective of actual abuse victim to realize how difficult it really is to get out of that situation and especially in her case she couldn't just leave because she didn't have the money and even when she does work even when she starts to learn English she, there are still a lot of things that are stopping her but she has the intention to leave and we see that and that is hopeful and that is not the message of anyone glorifying domestic abuse because she constantly wants to get out and she's working on it. Do I think it's an uncomfortable topic to read about? Of course, I didn't sit there and go like, oh, how cool. You know, I wasn't comfortable while reading it, but I was like, this is so important because if we don't talk about it and if we just kind of go like, well, if you're a victim of abuse, you should just go. Um, and if you stay with your partner, you're just like glorifying violence. That is so toxic and not helpful or conducive to any healing or anything at all. You're just really shutting people down and making them feel even less comfortable sharing their stories. So I think this book does a great job at making us uncomfortable by forcing us to, 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 to look violence in the eye and be like, this is real and this is happening. And it's not just happening to 15 year old girls and it's not just happening to older women, it's happening to a lot of people, including men. And I think a part of the critique as well, and I did see this once and like crop up a couple of times was, well, I was really uncomfortable with her being so young and being forced into like this marriage and whatever, like they shouldn't have done, like the author shouldn't have done that. A, this is based on a true story. But even then, it goes back to the whole idea of you can't just not write about it and pretend it doesn't exist and then it'll go away. And I was so livid when I read that because I was like, so you're saying that it's okay if an 18 year old is a victim of sexual violence or a 30 year old, but if it's a kid, it makes you uncomfortable and you don't want to talk about it. But that's the truth of the matter is that young women all the time, even non-immigrant women, even people who aren't being, you know, just given away into like an arranged marriage, People will fall in love with abusers, especially young women who are impressionable and who are vulnerable. And they'll excuse the behavior and they'll think it's love and they'll think that 
this is the man that they're supposed to be with forever and they'll find excuses to be like no it's it's not abuse it's love but it is abuse and if we don't have stories like that and if young girls don't get to read about that because I get that it's uncomfortable and you don't want to have that conversation with your kid but young girls need to read about that because if not they're going to keep becoming victims of disgusting people who abuse young children both boys and girls who take advantage of them and you need to be able to read about that and you need to be able to discuss that with your kids because if you keep pretending that's how so many kids end up in horrible toxic abusive relationships the other issues that this story deals with are issues of just being an immigrant the lack of english you know anna didn't speak english she didn't speak much she starts learning it um later on but there were some people who were confused as to why angie cruz decided to literally translate some phrases that were in Spanish originally and you know the the book was written in English but sometimes the syntax was very much like Spanish and some people had some issues with it and I even saw somebody say you know oh well if she wanted to use this then why not just write the book in Spanish and I do have an answer for that as somebody who writes historical fiction about you know my country Puerto Rico in English First of all, it's really hard sometimes to just come up with the right word. So sometimes you just have to use the expressions in Spanish because equivalency is not a thing, not all the time. But aside from that, the reason why one would bother to write an immigrant story or like a foreign person's story in English, but while using the language that's accessible and common for, you know, the native speaker is because the native speaker would write the book this way but it has to be written in english because there are so many books that are written in their original languages and they don't get translated and nobody cares about them well, not nobody but they don't make the bigger market they don't make the american market they don't go on to be a worldwide success because they only exist in their language and this is not a book just for dominicans it's not just a book for Im immigrants it's a book for everyone it's so important and that's why it was written in english to get people's attention and and the book itself does deal with racism it kind of has malcolm x and the civil rights movement in the background but also we have juan juan is pretty you know he's pretty racist he's not a fan of black people he's not a fan of puerto ricans he's constantly judging them criticizing them and that's just real and some people said that, that made them uncomfortable or like reading about how Cesar, who was a darker skinned brother, had a harder time fitting in, whereas Juan, who was a light skinned Latino, had a much easier time getting by. But that's just realistic. And yeah, it makes people uncomfortable, but that's just the truth. First of all, with the whole like Dominican versus Puerto Rican thing, that's just a thing. Like it's just always been a thing. Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic have always had this clash and some of it is just playful, you know, some of it is just kind of like, well, I'm better than you in like, a, you know, like everyone wants their country to be the best. But some of it is really serious and Latin America has a huge race issue, especially with like colorism because you know, being white is valued way more than, you know, being a person of color. And a lot of people want to deny their heritage. They want to deny their their blackness because at the end of the day, the whiter you are, the better you are. And, you know, white means classy and educated and black means you're poor and it means you're not intelligent, which is not true. I'm just saying that is the perspective that a lot of people have in Latin America. And I can, you know, attest for how it is in, in Puerto Rico and how that whole like tension between Puerto Rico and the Dominican is. Is it uncomfortable? Yeah. Did every time Juan say something about Puerto Ricans, did I get slightly annoyed and offended? Yes, but it's realistic. It's realistic and it had to be there. And I think it, it, it was a brilliant way to be like, Sure, we talk about race a lot, especially in America, as, oh, you know, racist, like, white people. 
but it's not an exclusive thing to the states. Am I saying that that justifies white people and their mistreatment of people of color in this country? Absolutely not. But it does show that it's a worldwide problem and that just because you're Latino doesn't mean you're not racist because there's a lot of racism and a lot of colorism that really needs to be addressed. And I think this book is a great way to start addressing that. But now let's talk about what really, really bothered me. A lot of reviewers said that they didn't like this book because the story wasn't original, because they've read it before and it didn't say anything new to them. As in, you know, it didn't really give them any any insight into what being an immigrant is like because they've read it elsewhere before. Now one commenter went as far as to say that they'd rather read something inaccurate but entertaining over something accurate, referring to this book, but boring. Now I have a problem if you don't, you know, if you don't enjoy a book, if you don't find a book entertaining, that's all a matter of taste. If you're allowed to like a book, you're allowed to not like a book. My issue though was the idea of referring to this book as boring because it was the same old story. Okay. Life for immigrants hasn't changed very much. And the reason why it's the same old story, as you know, some reviewers would say, is because it's a universal story. It's because it's a problem that exists and that is constant and that does not seem to have an end in sight. And immigrants aren't here to entertain you. Sure, I know what sells and I made a video on this. What sells is the immigrant who's in a gang, the immigrant who's like a drug dealer, the immigrants who have cool lives where they like come to America because they're escaping the freaking police or something. Most immigrants live, live very normal lives. And most people who come to this country or who go to other countries, they're not coming here because they woke up one day and they were bored and they were just like, yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna leave everyone I know and love and I'm gonna move to a country where I don't speak the language, where I don't have any family, where I don't have any friends and I'm gonna go down there and I'm gonna make my life really difficult for myself, but it's just for shits and gigs. Most people who immigrate have to leave their countries against their will. Why? Because there's corruption, because there's violence, because there's war, because there are so many problems. And in this case, this book shows that. This book shows, you know, it cuts back to the DR, it cuts back to the fact that everyone is struggling with money, that the family constantly needs money from Anna and that's why she can't just leave. And it cuts back to the fact that there's a war going on that's being ignored in the American press, but that is constant in her family's life and in Anna's life because she's hearing about it and reading about it and it affects her directly. And even if she hadn't left when, when she did, I've no doubt that she would have ended up having to leave because of the war. Most immigrants don't leave because they want to. They leave because they have to, because they have to provide for their families, because they're escaping a war, because they're escaping violence, because they're escaping corruption, because they're escaping injustice. And I'm sorry that that's boring to you. I'm sorry that not every single immigrant is out here ready to entertain you and give you some fun story about drugs or some magical adventure. Yeah, the reason why it feels like it could be anyone's story is because it is the story of every single immigrant that comes to this country. Because it is a story of so many people who have had to leave their families, who have to constantly live with this loneliness, this homesickness, this desire to go back home and they can't because they have a responsibility to take care of their families. And for you to go online and post and say, this is boring, is a slap in the face to every single person who has had to leave their country to find a better life. Because you're saying, oh, well, I'd rather hear a made up story that's at least fun because it has, you know, adventure because it's about drug dealers, then, you know, read the story of a normal person doing normal person things as an immigrant. And that is the issue, is people always want there to be like some magic, dramatic subplot to, to, this, to like Latino stories. They don't care to hear the daily lives of a Latino. They don't want to see a Latino who lives 
a fairly normal life. They want a show. And that's not what we're here for. Read things because of realism, because that's what I enjoy. And it's fine if you don't enjoy that, but it's disgusting to say that you didn't enjoy a book because an immigrant story is not entertaining enough for you if it doesn't have some high stakes, which I mean it did. She had to endure so much trauma and violence. It just, you know, it wasn't high stakes in the usual sense that a lot of these stories go. And yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I just, I had a colossal problem with every single review that I read that just said it wasn't interesting enough because it was a generic story that we've heard before. Does that make you think then that maybe there's a problem with the immigration system and there's a problem with the way that people have to live their lives and it's not boring, it's just you don't care about it because you don't want to hear about it again, but you got to hear about it again so that you can actually think and try and enact some change, no? Now, perhaps one of the biggest issues that Anna encounters throughout the book is this internal conflict with her desire to go back home and her, her need, not need, just feeling like she owes it to her family to stay. Every time Anna wants to go back or she tries to go back, she's, she's almost filled with guilt because she's like, if I go back, then that's taking my family's future away. So she has to endure all this trauma because she doesn't know what else to do because she's a 15 year old girl whose entire family has put all this pressure on her to give them a better life, but she's just a kid. I mean, at the end of the day, this is a story where Anna is constantly at the mercy of somebody else. It's either she does whatever her husband says or gets physically abused, or she goes home and gets abused by her mother who made up a future for them at her expense without knowing it, but still at her expense. At the end of the day, it's, it's a book really about Anna's journey to becoming independent and not needing to live the life that everyone else is building for her. So all in all, I would probably give this book an 8 out of 10. Although the ending did leave me wanting more, I genuinely plowed through this book. Like it's, it's rare for me to find a book that I just want to keep reading and keep reading and keep reading until it's done. I usually need breaks just because I get like very overwhelmed and I'm too ADD to like <laughs> commit to sitting and reading an entire book all at once but I just wanted to keep reading it. The, I think the biggest takeaway and the biggest success of this book is actually the simplicity of the story, which like I said, some people had an issue with, but I think the fact that it's not an over the top narrative, I think the fact that a lot of people can see themselves in the story, that's what made it so special. Because Anna's life could have been anyone's. Dominicana becomes a mouthpiece for victims of domestic abuse everywhere, both men and women. And it also becomes a voice for every single immigrant who's out there and can't use their own language to express how they feel and they don't have yours to explain it to you. All right, guys, so thank you so much for watching. This is our completed look for the day. If you liked it, make sure to leave a like, make sure to leave a comment letting me know what your thoughts are on this book or any book recommendations you have for me. Make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know every single time I upload on Sundays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And I will see you guys next time. Mm -hmm.